Welcome to the online worship of Holy Family Episcopal Church in Fishers, Indiana. I'm the Reverend Bruce Gray, Rector of Holy Family. And if you'd like more information about what's going on around the parish, you can go to our website, holyfamilyfishers.org, and not only read about the various ministries going on, but even fill out a welcome card if you'd like to join the mailing list. Our worship this morning is found in the Book of Common Prayer, and you can download from holyfamilyfishers.org an entire bulletin that includes all the pieces of this morning's worship, or just simply sit and reflect and pray and hopefully find this to be a time with God, unlike any other during this week, a time that's special. We begin in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, 
nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think of the deity as like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 66. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer nor withheld his love from me. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you and accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. 
You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while, while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day you will know that I am in the, my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Who would have thought that a mask was one of the key fashion accessories for the spring of 2020, suitable for all sorts of public gatherings, as long as they're very small and we all keep six feet apart, suitable for going to the grocery store or buying gasoline or other essential tasks like that. I would not have thought so. And I'm fortunate in that I have skilled seamstresses in my household, so I get a custom railroad mask as my fashion accessory. But it's one of those reminders to me of how it is that we are called to love one another in extraordinary times. That we are called to inconvenience ourselves. We are called to make sacrifices. We are called to give up things that are precious to us. People not being able to visit their mothers on Mother's Day. People not getting to have graduation ceremonies or very uh, different ones that most people would prefer. This is a time because of COVID-19 where we are forced to discover new ways to be Christians. That we are a Christian, we are exercising Christian behavior by staying away from each other by keeping at least six feet of distance, by wearing a mask in public, by doing things we normally would not want to do, but are willing to, in order to keep everyone safe. Now, as far as I know, knock on wood, all that stuff, I've not been exposed to COVID-19. I'm still going to wear a mask though when I'm in public, both just in case, but also to be a good example. And that's one thing that the scriptures are full of times when people are told, yeah, you don't really have to do this to be right with God, but will help other people behave better if you do so. The various recommendations for this time of being together are among those things we can do as Christians to be good examples. Now, one thing with this morning's gospel reading from John is there's this, to me, wonderful phrase from Jesus that he will not leave us orphaned, that we are always going to be loved by God. We are always going to be God's children. There's nothing we have to worry about. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And so whether it's wearing a mask, whether it's not running the errands we normally would enjoy running, we live in a way that's different than we've ever lived before. We live in a way that is unique, but fitting for this time. And that's one of the key things with Christian ministry, is we are called to live in the here and now. We are called to live with what's real rather than what we wish was true. And that way we are able to love in the here and now. That way we're able to love people in ways that make sense to their lives. Because we're not loving with a sense of if only. We're not loving with a sense of, oh, the good old days. Instead, we're loving with a sense of this is what's needed by my fellow humans, by my fellow creation, now, today. One of the annoying things about COVID-19 is there's so much we still don't know and therefore how much knowledge is unfurling sometimes multiple times a day. It makes me a certain uh, news addict because I want to see is there the 
thing that's going to change everything for the better that's developing. But that draws me out of the right now. Because even if a vaccine were discovered today, it would take months for it to reach every person in Fishers. If there was a cure, it would take quite a while to get that distributed in a way that we could go out safely. If suddenly people discovered how to make something precious out of milk so it was no longer dumped in fields, it would take a while for that to reach my everyday life. So instead, I need to stay in the here and now, even if I'm reading the news bulletins, and see how I can love the people around me. See how I can be a good example to the society around me. See how I can be someone who is showing the world that we are not orphans. God has not abandoned us, but rather God continues to inspire our scientists. We'll be praying about that in a few minutes. That God continues to bless our graduates. We'll be praying about that in a few minutes. That God continues to care for the sick, for the caregivers, and God continues to embrace those who have died. We are not orphans. Rather, we are beloved children of God. In this here and now, as weird as it is, tomorrow and for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for the Klein, Kleins, and Conroy Roth families, and for those who serve in our children's ministries. We pray for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of St. John's, Washington. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jennifer, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and his church. Especially remembering those on our prayer list, Linda, Greg, Kinley, Carla, Barb, and Lorraine. Are there others? 
We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray for those expecting babies soon, especially Diane and Quinn and Lizzie and Jimmy. Are there others? We pray for those preparing for confirmation and for those who are graduating this year. We pray in thanksgiving for the birth of Charlie Jane to Kylie and Dylan and for our own church community. Even when we are physically separated, we are one body in prayer. Please add your own thanksgivings. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. And the Lord be always with you. And also with you. May the, the peace, peace of the Lord be with you. Also with you.
Let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bless, O Lord, these prayer shawls and these Bibles in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, that all who are embraced by these shawls and read these Bibles may be filled with your Spirit, may share widely your love, and wherever they go in the world, may they always feel and share your loving embrace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A special prayer for our graduates. God our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for those doing research for treatments and vaccines for COVID-19. O God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us and given us stewardship over all the earth. Increase our reverence before the mystery of life and give us new insights into your purposes for the human race and new wisdom and determination in making provisions for its future. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a general thanksgiving. 
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for the immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And our blessing for the season of Easter. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin and to true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. to be able to see what the various announcements are for the week because we still doggone it fourth time's the charm that's the phrase yep fourth time <laughs> okay One, two, three. <laughs>